Austin, when you're looking for new ideas on what to study inside of PyoSolver, it's useful to look at high stakes matches for inspiration on how to develop classically unorthodox lines that can lead your opponent into unfamiliar territory. Today, we're going to look at a hand played very recently at 5100 on Poker Stars between Angry Ogre 1 and high stakes legend OTB Red Baron, where Angry Ogre donks not once, but twice into Red Baron's pre flop and flop raises. And then we're going to look at why Pile Solver loves these plays. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to this channel. Helps out a lot. I really appreciate it. On to the hand. It's 5100 and I imagine the game has formed around GA207, who has played a little suspiciously pre-flop, raising to multiple sizes, and even doing some pre-flop limping with hands like King-8 suited. The other players at the table are known killers. Emma Masher Dog, Zoruba, and OTB Red Baron are all guys who will frankly skin you alive at the table. The action folds around to OTB Red Baron, who raises to two and a third big blinds with King of Clubs, Eight of Hearts, and he's flatted by Angry Ogre in the big blind with Jack, Eight of Spades, and they have about, effectively, 170 big blind stacks behind them. In this formation, I imagine, Angry Ogre should theoretically call approximately the same percentage of hands that OTB is raising, if not slightly more, given the very low rake structure compared to the blinds. In other words, if OTB Red Baron is raising about 42% of hands on the button, Angry Ogre should probably be defending between 42 and 45% of hands. The flop comes 5, 6, 7, Rainbow. An Angry Ogre donks a third of the pot into OTB. First, is this donk bet any good? Indeed, Pio Solver seems to really like this donk bet, and on this board, Pio actually recommends donking a huge variety of hands for the one-third sizing. Let's investigate why Pio Solver likes this lead so much. So first, when we look in the range explorer, we can see that despite the in-position player having more EV in general, the big blind has about 40 combinations of two pairs, sets, and straights, while the button has about 25 combinations of those strong hands, but in exchange, he'll have more over pairs. This inequity of nutted hands is a function of having different preflop ranges. If we look at the button raising range and overlay it on top of how a big blind should defend against a slightly bigger than 2.3 open, we can see that the big blind should defend some combinations of hands that the button doesn't raise. I've highlighted these combinations in red. Pro tip. In general, the smaller your opponent raises pre-flop, the more combinations of exclusive hands you'll have, and the more you should develop a donking range on low coordinated flops like 245, 456, etc. When the big blind defends against a button min raise, the big blind will have a lot of exclusive low cards. When the button raises to 3x, the big blind will defend much more tightly, he'll 3 bet much more often, and he will have very little card exclusivity compared to the button. So in flops where you have significant nut advantages, you should develop a donking range for a few reasons, but not limited to 1. You prevent your opponent from pot controlling many of their strong but not nutted hands, like aces or kings. We've already seen that the in-position player has a lot more over pairs and medium strength hands than the out-of-position player. 2. You donk to prevent your opponent from taking free cards against your medium equity hands. Three. By threatening to play a small pot, you often force your opponent to raise when he has strong hands and reveal how nutted he is. 4. Your small bet will often induce raises that you can subsequently 3-bet with the flop nuts advantage, which will put a heap of pressure on your opponent, especially when you're 170 big blinds deep. At first glance, the actual composition of the donking strategy is very complex, as Pio seems to partition nearly every hand category into both bets and checks. In the range explorer, we can see that in the big blind's leading range, he should have about 20 combinations of very high EV hands. And in his checking range, he should also have 20 combinations of very high EV hands. He should bet top pair slightly more often than he should check it, 
He should check second and third pair slightly more often than he bets it. And then he should also mix his open enders and gut shots between bets and checks. When you compare the EV between betting and checking, you can see that it's close with a lot of hands. So it doesn't matter too much which line the big blind takes with a lot of combinations of hands, as long as he's mixing various hand categories into both of his betting and checking ranges and not over bluffing with hands like king queen offsuit or jack 10 offsuit, which would be very unnatural donk bets to begin with. So how does OTB Red Baron respond to a large donking range? He should be raising, of course. The button raising range is a little bit more straightforward to describe. We should raise our nutted hands and some straight draws for balance, and we should raise a smattering of suited overcards with backdoor flush draws to give button coverage on overcard straightening and backdoor flush turns. A small percentage of nutted hands are put into the button's calling range if simply for protection against possible large turn and river barrels that are likely to materialize across many turns. As you can see in the hotness comparison, when the big blind leads and the button calls, on overcard turns, the big blind, who remains uncapped because of the action, is likely to continue to pour on large bets against the capped button. In this model, I had to limit the big blind's turn bet sizes due to memory constraints, I apologize, but if I gave him 140% sizing here, I predict we'd see it used across many turns. Now, when the big blind leads, OTB Red Baron's exact combo of King-8 offsuit is recommended to be a call here, but as you can see from the range comparison function, the EV between raising and calling is quite close. It's quite possible that Red Baron's actual strategy here is going to be balanced in such a way that its EV will be near equilibria to GTO, even if the exact combinations aren't always played in the exact same way. After OTB raises, and you can see that this is getting wildly complex, especially 170 big blinds deep, Angry Ogre should actually 3-bet him a whopping 14% of the time, namely pushing straights, sets, 8x, and 9x hands for balance and blocking purposes. And this makes a lot of sense, that as the player with the flop nuts advantage, Ogre should want to 3-bet the flop liberally. After all, if he didn't want to get raised, he wouldn't have led in the first place. As played, Angry Ogre just calls, which is definitely plus EV, though Pile Solver prefers 3-betting his exact combination of hands. That's pretty crazy. The turn is the 7 of diamonds, and Angry Ogre donks again. Now, if we go back to why we donk the flop, you'll see many of those reasons extend to the turn as well. We don't want our opponent to take free cards against our vulnerable hands, we want to prevent pot control when we're ahead, and we want to put in money on turns that hit our range much harder than it hits villains. So on 5, 6, 7, you can imagine that the turns that are going to want to be checked back a lot, hence the turns that you're going to want to lead, are 4s, 6s, 7s, and 9s, basically everything that brings in trips and straights. And you can see that in the hotness comparison, the big blind should very clearly donk these turns. So, after Ogre donks, OTB should still have all of his sets and two pairs and straights that he raised on the flop, so all of those are still going to want to raise the turn to set up a river shove, especially this deep. So, facing a raise, OTB should continue raising all of his strong hands, as well as a few straight draws that raise the flop. Suddenly, the draws with no showdown value are slightly better to raise, than the draws with showdown value, so raising queen 4 suited and jack 8 suited makes more sense than raising ace 4 suited or ace 8 suited. When you're subdividing your draws into both calls and raises in a position like this, remember that the more likely that you can win at showdown, the more you should err on calling. The less likely you're going to win at showdown, the more you should raise immediately. Following this general logic, king 8 offsuit has a little bit of showdown value, so it makes for a fairly sensible call. Now, before we look at the river, let's ask, which player has the advantage? After Ogre leads the turn and only gets called by OTB, 
it seems to me that it's much more likely that Ogre remains the most uncapped nutted player. And a quick look at each player's EV using the comparison buttons shows that indeed Ogre has the EV advantage going to the river. So we should expect him to use a larger sizing across most rivers to push that EV advantage. The river falls to 10 of diamonds, which is a relative blank. Angry Ogre checks, and OTB Red Baron checks back King High to win this crazy pot. Now, according to Pile Solver, Angry Ogre misses a chance to bluff here. As the uncapped player, Ogre is allowed a handful of bluffs to balance his trips, straights, and full houses, and he needs to choose a few combinations to balance. Generally, you want to bet the worst showdown hands you have by the river that block your opponent's calling range, so hands like 8x, 9x, and 4x are likely bluff candidates. But of course, that's really easy for me to say as I'm sitting here looking at a solver. Here on the river, when checked to, Pile Solver seems to prefer betting King 8 offsuit rather than checking it back, so OTB Red Baron also possibly misses a chance to bluff on the river, but fortunately for him, he's got King High and he's able to showdown and win. Always such a good feeling when you somehow show down garbage hands and you win. So what did you think of this crazy hand? Would you have played it the same way as Angry Ogre or OTB Red Baron? Please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next week with more Poker Hands.